Hey everyone, it's Rainbow Rage, and uh, this is, I guess, the first episode in my tutorial series on uh, vectors in Inkscape. It's going to be primarily focused on pony vectors. Uh, if you want to hear stuff about um, other things in Inkscape, though, feel free to ask. I uh, I can probably help you out. Um, so we'll get started here. Uh, there's, also, there's there's a lot of tools here. And uh, you may not be sure which one to use. Most of them are useless. There's only like four tools actually that we need. Um, first one here is the uh, Draw Bezier Curves tool. This is what you'll use to create your objects. It's basically the same thing as the uh, pen tool, I think it's called in Photoshop. So, uh, yeah, you take that, you basically just click, place a node, click again, place another node, again, another node. If you click and drag, it'll actually create a smooth node as opposed to a cusp, I think they call it in Inkscape, uh, with uh, Bezier handles or, or whatever, yeah, uh, yes, but you'll, you'll, you'll create a curve. Um, so ponies are all made of curves, so that's handy. Uh, so here I've, I have it set to uh, no fill, no stroke, uh, so I can see what's going on, but you can always assign one. Just clicking down here, you get your you get your object. It's all filled in. Uh, so once we create it, you'll probably want to change a bit. So we use edit paths by node. So this is what you use to change a path that you've already created, or change an object that you've already created. And uh, if you need to move a node, you really you just click the node and drag it. If you need to edit a path, Inkscape will actually let you just grab the path and move it. That's a pretty quick and dirty way to do it. But if you like, if you're just going for an approximation, this is good enough. Uh, you can do quite a bit just grabbing it. But you'll get a lot more precision out of grabbing the actual handles and moving those around. So if you have uh, smooth nodes, of course, it's got handles on both sides that are tangent to each other so you can have different lengths but they'll always be uh, the same um, I guess tangent to each other so if you move one it'll move the other and that'll so it'll affect uh, the, both curves um, one thing that's a bit different than Inkscape or a different than Photoshop sorry uh, so I know yeah I know in Photoshop if you sort of Cross the streams, as it were, like here, it would actually hollow out. In Inkscape, generally, it'll, it it won't do that. It'll actually it'll always fill whatever whatever's bounded, unless unless the paths have a uh, an opposite direction, because paths have a direction apparently. Um, so if they're going in the opposite direction, if the inside path is going in the opposite direction of the outside path, it won't get filled in. Um, there's another. Uh, option you can set it to known as even odd placement, whereas every other overlap will be hollowed out instead of filled in. Uh, so that's a little a little beyond the scope of this video. It's really something you just gotta play with until uh, you understand how it works. It's a bit confusing, uh, but yeah, I see here it's paths are going in opposite directions, so it'll hollow out. Um, but basically, what you need to know is most of the time it won't cancel out if you cross the streams. So, yes, most of the time it won't do that. Um, generally in ponies, you don't have to cross paths anyway, so it's not much of an issue. Uh, the other very useful tool is the Select and Transform tool. Uh, it's what you use for selecting stuff. Uh, it's really when you need to manage your objects, you'll be using this a lot. Uh, just click an object to select it. You can also drag a box, and uh, dragging the box will select all objects underneath it. But it will only select an object if you completely cover it. So you see, I get half of our, my object in here, there, and, and it won't select. So you need to completely cover it. Um, then once it's selected, you also get, you can move it around, click and drag. You can grow it. You can stretch it. Uh, you click again, you get rotation handles, so you can rotate it and skew it. You can also see this cross here in, in the center. 
that's your axis of rotation, and you can move that around, and you can, and it'll rotate around that axis. And you can actually, you don't even stay within the bounding box. Like you can put your axis of rotation like way over here, and then it'll it'll rotate around that axis. Uh, yeah. There's also your ellipse tool for drawing ellipses. You'll need those for eyes. Um, the gradient tool is uh, it's, it's for creating gradients. Uh, also used in the eyes. I have another tutorial all about gradients. So that's all I'll mention about that. Dropper tool is used for selecting color. And uh, the cool thing about Inkscape's dropper tool is if you click and drag, you get a circle, and it'll actually select the average color inside of that circle. So that's so that's useful, especially if you're getting colors off of your reference image. Uh, you will only you'll only uh, well you'll if you get the average, you will select the average color that it is because your colors will probably be distorted rather than just getting the one that you of the pixel that you just happen to click on. Um, that's all the tools, really. Uh, there's a couple of useful dialog boxes. The layer box. Uh, create, create layers. Um, here's where you manage your layers. You can also create sub-layers by going to uh, add sub-layer of current when you select po as the position. Um, important thing to know about sub layers is that the the root layer is actually beneath any sub layers so that's just an interesting little quirk about it uh, changing changing the order of layers you know it's pretty self-explanatory basically layers on that are on top are are cover over layers under beneath it uh, you can lock a layer so that when a layer is locked you can't actually edit it Apparently, let me grab that. Oh, yeah, these objects aren't in a layer. Sometimes it'll, if you, yeah, okay. That's one thing you gotta watch out for. That sometimes you don't an object will you'll create and not even put it in a layer. Um, you always want to make sure your objects are within layers because layers are handy and they'll let you organize everything. And actually, sub layers. Aren't that great? Aren't that useful? Unless you're really making something really intricate, uh, because Inkscape it's actually very easy to manage objects within a layer. Um, so you don't actually need as many layers as you would, uh, you know, if you're making this in Photoshop or something. Uh, other handy ones: Control Shift F gives you fill and stroke. That well lets you edit the fill and stroke color. I think you get uh, a whole bunch of different ways of doing uh, your red, green, blue, hue, saturation, lightness, which is uh, the one I prefer. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, which is apparently K. Um, this I find best if I want to make something darker, like if it's a shadow or, yeah, basically shadow colors, really, because you just add a little black to it and you get a darker shade. Color wheel for making your own colors is color wheel's fun for making your own colors. Uh, CMS I don't really know what it is, but it's there. Uh, you can also actually create gradients straight from the fill and stroke. Stroke style you can make your stroke thicker. Uh, change your miter limit. You can also give everything a blur. Not useful. Change the opacity. Change the opacity of an object versus changing the opacity of the layer are two things you need to watch out for. Um, that's really all there is. Uh, there's swatches, which are handy. That I could save, not swatch. Control shift W is swatch. Um, I'll probably get more into those in a different video. And uh, Control shift A is another handy one. Align and distribute. You won't use these for ponies at all, but I find that as soon as I stray away from just doing straight pony traces, uh, I end up using this a lot, like all the time. 
And you can move these around depending on how much screen space you have and just organize all your dialogues. Uh, line distribute, don't need to open all the time. Swatches if you're not using them. But fill and, fill and stroke and layers are two that I would recommend having open all the time. Like always. Because because uh, layers, even if you're not managing your layers, you want to know what layer you're working in, making sure that's all right. And fill in a stroke, you're always making sure that everything's the right color. And even if you're not changing a color, the color information is actually quite useful for making sure everything's working properly. Um, but that's it for this video. Uh, if it was too fast for you, and uh, let me know. I'll make a I'll try to make another one. It's a little simpler. Uh, otherwise. Um, I'll see you in the next video.